Well, there I am. Look at that handsome face. Hello, folks. Welcome back. For I am the one. The only. I am Hobo Tom. My newest Bullet Club shirt. The crown jewel. Oh, wait a second. What could that mean? Oh, this is an AEW show. We'll see. Let's see here. It says, AEW Dynamite. Um, I am feeling so much better. I think the only thing is, I don't even know if I can see it in this one eye. It's kind of reddish. I don't know. It's so hard to tell. I think I just kind of ooze stuff out. So, yeah. Yeah, I feel a little late. That's okay. I don't have to go into work until 1 o'clock tomorrow. Then I have a day off. Visit a friend. Work late. Work, work, work. Oh, I did. I am getting my Valentine's Day treat for myself. Jersey Mike subs. Yeah. I have to treat myself somehow. Heaven knows no one's going to treat me. Although I am working on that. I think. I don't know, folks. I want to hear your opinion out there. Should I just like marry some rich woman and just say, screw my dreams and aspirations of becoming a professor? I don't know. Some days I feel, I know I'm going to be leaving my one job soon. Like that axe is already fallen. So yeah, that's just a matter of time as they say. Especially because my boss wasn't too happy. That I'm working speed week. Yes, I remember. Next week's going to be super weird. I'll probably do... Actually, I'm going to do two videos. Actually, I'll probably do one video this week. Yeah, probably Friday I can get that done. If not, it's not going to take that long. Sunday. But yeah, it might be like two videos. And then next week, you'll see what happens at speed week. I got my promoted. I got my promotion. My jacket's actually up. My coolie jacket's actually up there. Hanging up. They pay better? They give me more hours. Again. Cream, baby. Cash rules everything around me. Especially when you start to promote a bunch of ditzy bimbos. Or hire ditzy bimbos. Yeah, that happened. I, I like, very quick story. I found out they like began to hire like college girls like right off the street. That sounds terrible. Yeah, I've been there for three years. Barely a higher, higher hello. They just say get back to work. And then they wonder why I choose to screw up at work now. It's just... Pay's not worth it. Getting paid better. That place. When the scoring season comes around. Oh, that's what it's going to be like. For like three, four months, depending on which place I'm, work I'm working for. Again, racetrack is... Racetrack is it's treating me awesome. Can't fault them. And then it's just after August. I mean, if I did have to find a job in June, I only need one day off. If it's that one place I'm kind of hoping for. So, yeah, but and enough about my rant and raves. Let's talk about some AEW Dynamite. Yeah, that, that, that sounds about right. Um, starts off with CM Punk and MJF. They start doing a promo in the ring. Uh, CM Punk wants a rematch against MJF. Yeah, he has to find a tag team partner and go through FTR. We'll see what other challenges there will be laid out. First match of the night, we have the Blade versus Wardlow. This is the one thing that AEW has been known to do. Oh, that's right. I did go to the gym. And I did the video. Uh, the one thing AEW has been known to do 
not hobo tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be freezing. Actually, I am tomorrow. I have to wake up and go do the mall hobo. Go do the mall route. Need three more pieces of aluminum for my at least double digits. Which reminds me, I got 104 last week. So that's good. That was Super Sunday coming up. I don't know. Hopefully my neighbors just leave out all their cans. That would be good. But yeah, wait, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, um, the Blade versus Wardlow. Um, AEW is doing a lot more random match stuff. I mean, I don't even know where they came up with this this idea. Um, it's not bad. I don't know why. I don't know what. What? I mean, if they went to like gang warfare, like they do in New Japan Pro Wrestling, it would be the Hardy Family Order, or the, or the, or the Hardy Family Organization taking on. A, a, Guess the pinnacle, so I can see that. Um, Blade he goes right after the legs of, of Wardlow. At least he's smart. He knows Wardlow's a big dude, thick dude. Only way to get that guy down is go after his legs. Um, but Wardlow again, too big, a huge belly to belly suplex. That looked great. The big strikes in the corner by Wardlow, and and then uh, that like. Yeah, the blade got a couple more moves in. Not that much to talk talk home about because the blade got power bombed for what? Life. That's right, baby. 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 So yeah, he got power bombed for no. I'm not going to do that yet. Four times. Four. Yeah. And then he, he just put his boot on him. That was the end of that. Wardlow wins. Not so much a squash match. Solid match. Nothing really horrible happened. Cheeseburger match. Okay, then we get into the junk part of the AEW. Uh, Malachi Black did a promo. Chris Jericho comes out with the inner circle. He mentions, maybe I should have recruited the other members of LAX. Oh, a Senor Hernandez. And a homicide. That would be pretty cool. Then um, another promo came out. We had a Rapungi Vice. But wait a second. What's that music I hear? Wait a second. Someone too sweet for now it's time. Wow. Yeah. So we had Rapungi Vice. Get jumped by the Young Bucks and out of cold, baby! Boom! Ouch, my hand's cramping up. I don't know why that hand's cramping up. Yeah. Weird stuff. I don't know. Getting old. But yeah, wait a second. Boom! Adam Cole, baby! Jump Rapungi Vice and Oh, wait. What's this? Oh, sweet Lord, baby Jesus. The best of all baby Jesuses. Oh, my goodness. Jay. The switch. Wait, let me guess this is proper entrance. The switchblade. Jay White. Shows up. And oh my goodness. He's he's everywhere now. He's here in AEW. He was in Impact last week. Yeah, that's right, because I did my Impact show. Did I do my Impact show last week? Yeah, I did do my Impact show last week. Did I? Yeah, I actually did. 
Oh wow, I'm impressed with myself. That's good. But yeah, Jay White showed up, so that was pretty cool. And let's see here. Um, so that was that was good. It's good to see all the members. Of the too sweet, because just like Adam Cole said, once you're Bullet Club, you're Bullet Club for life. Yeah. Uh, then our next match, we had, oh, bask in his glory, oh, bask in his glory, yeah, I forget what they, Limitless, Keith Lee is now in AEW, and this was such a meh. Thing mainly because just before this, we had Jay White of the Bullet Club. So how are you gonna match that with the Limitless? Oh, bask in his glory, Keith Lee. Yeah, again, AEW makes weird booking decisions. I'm gonna mention that to Matt tomorrow too. In fact, I might mention it to Matt tonight. Or next, no, probably next week. Yeah, next week's, next week's such a weird week. Um, very quick. I, you know, I'll talk about this match. I'll talk about it next week. Very quickly. Um, it was Keith Lee versus Isaiah Cassidy of the Hardy Family Order. Uh, Lee does all <laughs> Isaiah gets tossed to begin. That was great. Um, Lee does a leapfrog, drop down, the fun splash. Well, he did put on a little bit of weight, though. Um, if he did have COVID, I can sympathize with him for the whole COVID-19 situation. I put on, like, weight, which I am. Hopefully, you can tell a little bit in the face. I'm actually losing a little bit. Probably because I got COVID-19. I just powered through it. Because, well, I don't have medical insurance. So I'm a hobo. Yeah, hobos don't have medical insurance. We just have to, like, deal with stuff. Tough people, though. But yeah, um, so that was great. <laughs> and he did this. Uh, There's a slingshot. That was good. slingshot. He slingshot himself over the, a slingshot splash. That's crazy. He's like 300. Yeah, they say 320 pounds. Listen, folks. He's like 350, okay? At least. But yeah, and then he pounced him. But pounce is great to see. Um, Isaiah. That was the weakest, botchiest neck drape I ever saw. Followed that up with a, a corkscrew plancha. I'll call it a plancha if I feel like it. I don't care what Excalibur says. But yeah, eventually at the end he does like like a Simone like from his shoulders to like a body slam. Um, not so much the big band crush. Or whatever it was. But yeah, something different. Keith Lee wins. Again, just the weird part. If this if this opened the show, it would have been amazing. We're like, oh, Keith Lee to open the show. That's amazing. But I mean, we just saw Jay White. I mean, Jay White's too sweet. So yeah. He's too Sweet. So yeah, um, it was a fun match though. I'll tell you what. I'm, you know what? That one botch did take away from because we're like, huh? All of like, Discord was like, huh? What's that? I hate to say, it, Keith Lee. It's a ham sandwich. Oh, yeah, there was no Spirit Bomb or the Big Bang Crush, whatever. Oh, yeah, very quickly. So the reason why next week's weird, not only is it Speed Week, but, like, it was, it was a sad day and a happy day. The sad part is my good friend Matt, Matt uh, Matt's dad passed away because I know he texted me, I think, during 
our meeting for the one race. And I was just like, dude, I don't even want to be here. I powered through, though. I'm a hobo. Well, I need the money. And I was there. But yeah, that was... But the weird thing is, like, that whole day, I'm just like, dude, this sucks. Um, I think the next day, the day of the 500, my nephew was actually born. So... It's just one of those weird things. It's like, yeah, it's great. I mean, I'll tell you what. <laughs> the weird thing is, and out there in YouTube land, let me know if this has ever happened to you. Like, I felt worse being at work when my friend's dad passed away than I did at the, the birth of my nephew. Mainly, probably mainly because my sister has like six kids, or she had five, and this just added one more. So I'm just like, yeah, it's another one. Whereas Matt's dad, he was, I don't know. It just kind of sucked. Like that whole day, just I'm, I'm just like, dude, I'm not feeling it. It's like I was so happy to be the walker. I could just like walk around the entire building. I think, I think literally that day I just walked around the entire sports venue. And I'm just like, like in like half a day, so I'm like, hey, yeah, yeah, you want your break? And they say yay or nay and... So I'd be like, yeah, whatever. Let me sit down. Actually, I think more towards the end, I was like, yeah, I better start giving people their breaks because my legs are getting tired from walking. But I mean, like that day, I think I just like walk. I'm just like, you know what? I'll be here. I'll do what I'm supposed to do, but I'm just going to like walk. It was just so weird. Let me know out there in the YouTube universe if I had an experience like that. Uh, then we had a Thunder Rosa promo. And it is what it was. Her and Mercedes Martinez is such a B-level stuff. Uh, and then we had CM Punk. Oh, wait a second. I, don't I have any? Wait. I don't want any. Yeah. CM. Let's see here. Let me find some. 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 Yeah. CM Punk deserves this. Although. Let's see here. Where is it? Where is Black Mussolini and Kennedy? It's a cold of per sun attitude. I'm the cult of, I'm the cult of, I'm the cult of personality. Ask not what your country can do for you. No, what did I just do? There we go. So yeah, so again, any CM Punk match, I always starts off, cult of personality, what do you see, a cult of personality, there we go, that's good enough, that's enough, CM Punk was, he has a good entrance, but yeah, jury's still out. Better than, I, better than I remember. I'll give him that much. I'll, except for the Pepsi plunge and the Pepsi twist. Yeah, that, that got a little re quick. But you know what? So CM Punk and John Moxley. Wild thing. You make my heart sing. You make everything groovy. Wild thing I think I love you but I want to know for sure oh wait that's a feature on the theme almost yeah uh, so CM Punk and John Moxley taking on FTR this is actually really fun I'll tell you what this was probably the high point of the match uh, it was a good long match classic wrestling match Punk and Dex they go hold for hold. That's always good to see. FTR does the classic double heel double teams. Um, really classic tag match. This is that one like nostalgic match where you're like, yeah, this is pro wrestling. This is like the way I remembered pro wrestling being. When you had your, your really technical teams, even if it was face and heel. I mean, granted, everyone else back in the day were like came from some like some Jacksonville dive road. Scuzzball bar, but yeah, I mean, again, just think of all 
<laughs> the moon dogs, the fabulous ones. Ah, the Freebirds. They look like they were drinking at the same southern bar in like North Jacksonville or Southern Georgia. Oh wait, North Jacksonville and Southern Georgia, that's the same thing. Oh well. But yeah. So again, this was a really classic tag team match. Good wrestling. Uh, Dax. He went, over, went after the wounded knee of Punk, which was smart. Then FCI began to really target that as a double as a uh, double team going after that knee. Uh, Moxley, the double DDTs to FDR. Was it CM Punk? <laughs> Starts to die. Oh yeah, CM Punk started to die. He got caught by FDR. Moxley ties onto CM Punk, which I'm sure there was some trepidation for, of. Uh, so Moxley finished that. Dax drops the elbow. Uh, Punk, he eventually does get the hot tag as Moxley gets up a bit. There was back-to-back, -back, uh, yay booze, uh, dual submission. Uh, Moxley had the one guy in the sleeper hold. Not the rear naked choke. Rear naked choke. The arms behind. Sleeper hold. Kind of holding the forehead. Excalibur has to get that right. Uh, Punk put in the Anaconda Vice. That was distracted because the one referee was there. Tully gets involved. Tully gets the GTS. Oh, he has to be careful. Tully Blanchard isn't exactly one of the four horsemen anymore, okay? Um, then they did the duel. Then they, again, the tease of the duel finishers. Then they eventually got the duel finishers. The uh, Paradigm Shift and the GTS. Moxley and CM Punk at the win. I'll tell you what, this was a good match. This was fun. They didn't have to get Tully involved. Surf and turf match. Only thing that took away from it was getting Tully involved. And um, then you had AQA, which I think Booker T trained, versus Jade Cargill for the host, I mean, TBS championship. Um, AQA gets in an arm drag. Actually, AQA got in a lot of offense. This was not the, the squash match I thought it was going to be. Uh, Jay, she does like a one-armed electric chair drop uh, during the break, and they showed a replay of it, the Gorilla Press. AQA is not bad, though. <laughs> I mean, she's probably better than a third or two-thirds of the other women wrestlers there. Uh, she did a, a sling blade, which actually... Looked better than Seth Rollins, Finn Balor's, and anyone else. And Britt Baker's Sling Blade. I'm impressed with. Uh, the Tilt Roll DDT. She, and she has a great shooting star press. Anyone who, can, anyone who can do a shooting star press, I just give mad props to. That's not easy. That's freaking terrifying. You have to flip the right way. And you see everything before your eyes. Including your life. Who was that? Let's see her, so I don't, I don't see her. Let me go see something here. God, I hope that noise. Oh yeah, see? In honor of Bullet Club. Chase Owens. But yeah. Jeez, I hope that wasn't a pipe. I think some critter is trying to get into the house. I don't know. That sounded weird. But yeah, oh well. Yeah, I didn't investigate. The last time, <laughs> very quick story. The last time my cat saw a critter outside, my cat is very protective of my house. Probably because she thinks it's her house. And I just clean up the litter box and feed her. But yeah, like she almost jumped through a window to get to another cat. So yeah, I have to kind of be conscious of that. Where was I? Um, oh yeah, this whole Jade Cargill match. Again, you you pull off of, you pull off a shooting star press. I have mad props to you because you're you're facing forward. You have to do a backflip. You see the turnbuckle. So first of all, so you're facing this way. So you have to jump, get enough height, rotate. And you literally see everything, too. So you see the top of the building. 
the turnbuckle and very quickly as I learned via when I did my moonsault that ground comes down pretty quickly so yeah you gotta anyone who does a shooting star press I'll always give mad props to so she did one yeah Jade kicked out of that she went for another one and it wasn't happening uh, she kind of had to get down she realized Jade got up and then in the, at the end of the match the whole, whole discord uh, and this is why I'm going to give this this match a, a can of soup rating. It wasn't bad. And again, there was a shooting star press. Jade did the jaded. But you could hear the ref calling the spot for the two wrestlers. Because the ref said, push, push, push her off. And I'm like, wait a second. That's, that's a manly voice. That's a rough read. The ref was telling that was the ref was giving the wrestlers the spots. Whoa! They didn't even practice. They didn't even walk through this. They just had the ref like tell them what to do. That's terrible, man. That's the only reason why this match was a can of soup. You have the ref telling you what to do. That's terrible. Uh, and then there was Cutler, Adam Cole, baby. Boom. And the Young Bucks. Oh, yeah, this is the line. Adam Cole said, you know what? We made a, we made a promise to Jay White. And, yeah, Jay White hasn't been, he hasn't been exactly friendly with us. But you know what? Matt, Nick, and, and just to enlighten you, Cut, Cutler, you know, once, once, your Bullet Club, you're too sweet. But you know what? Unless you get the heart. Well, Adam Cole did get the heart out. He got the heart out by the villain. The villain! Martin Skull. But you know what? Your Bullet Club for life. So yeah. I always had to include that. Wait, what's the song? Oh, hell yeah. Touch demigods. One like you. Again. Ooh, that's pretty cool. The unused. I'll have to remember that. That's going to get stored in the old brain pan. But yeah. Oh, wait. Where was I? Oh yeah, once you're a Bullet Club, you're a Bullet Club for life. So yeah. Um, then we had a Serena Deeb, uh, five minute professor challenge because she's obviously knows her way around the wrestling ring. And I think she still is the NWA Women's Champion. Uh, she took on Katie Arquette. <laughs> and we're like, wait, is this Dave Arquette's sister? No, I have no idea who this woman was. Um, uh, this is just a glorified squash match. Uh, Dree, the big things is she had a swing neck breaker. That was great. Got her in submission hold. She like like was literally looking at the clock. She's like, yeah, I got a whole minute to do this. This match is over. Squash match. Entertaining, though. At least Serena Deeb's a good talker. And Katie Arquette. Yeah. She has, she has a nice little... Uh, Boute on her. Thick. Thick in all the right places. Baby. Boom. <laughs> uh, so yeah. This was a ham sandwich of a match. Maybe it was a Care Bears that fell. Something sounded like it fell or died. Who knows? Probably a squirrel died in the roof. Um, 
Oh yeah, then we get to our main event. Lance Archer versus Hangman Adam Page. Wait, this is our there's there's too many Adams. They all sound the same. Yeah, this is a Texas death match. Now I was concerned because the last last Texas death match I saw was Mickey James versus Diana Parazzo. And oh my goodness, was that convoluted. You could pin or submit per someone, but then they had to answer the 10 count or else they lost. At least AEW simplified it and said you either had to win by knockout or submission. So that makes a little bit more sense because if you say, hey, I give up, I mean, if you cry, un hey, listen, listen up, sweetheart. You cry, uncle, that means you're done, baby. You're done in my eyes. You ain't no son of mine. But yeah. So that makes, at least it's not as convoluted. They don't have like 10 seconds to like say, oh yeah, I'm okay. I can get up after being knocked unconscious or being stuck in a sleep. I'll just put someone in a sleeper hold and like, let them drop. You know, it takes longer than 10 seconds for them to recover. Or in realist, r real time it does. But yeah, this is wrestling. So who knows? Uh, Lance Archer versus Adam Page. They start in the back. They must have realized that they were getting close to the end time. <laughs> so, so, so they had no entrances. Uh, Archer gets thrown through the glass. And there he bladed. He got some juice. Uh, Page hit the buckshot lariat. Um, Lance Archer thwarted. The plans of Paige with a garbage can in. Then uh, Dan Lambert came in. He started to take the, the top rope apart. This could have gone one of two ways. And it, probably my way would have been the better way. I'd want to see him. Maybe she's but they'd find a cat. Another critter in the yard. Who knows? I wanted to see them use the turnbuckle bolts. Because you know what? People say the apron's the hardest part of the ring. Uh -uh. The steel ring post and the turnbuckle bolts. Those two things... They are the most hardest part of the ring because they're steel. Like solid cast iron, cast steel. And if they pay a lot of money, that's tugs that's a Tugson steel turnbuckle bolt. Okay? Like Yeah, it's it's, it's quasi indestructible. You need a lot of force. Like Gunshot 50 caliber or 45, maybe 9 mil. 9 mil caliber bullet club force to break one of those things. Again, those ring posts, they're solid, they're steel. It's hollow steel, but it's still steel. And it's not necessarily that thin. I mean, they're like pretty decently thick for steel. I mean, Boat hulls, if you get a steel boat hull, if you have like a inch and a quarter boat hull, that's pretty That's pretty thick. But, I mean, you start talking about steel ring posts, like, yeah. Then you cap it off. Sometimes you pour some concrete in part of it so it's a little bit heavier. Those things are not light. So, yeah. But then he just, like, took the top rope off so he can't do the buckshot lariat. But he can still do the dead eye, which we only saw tease, but he did not do. Yes. So that was kind of weird. Um, Paige hits a moonsault from the barricade when they went outside. Paige got busted open. They both did the blade job, baby. Paige got got ripped in a couple places. I know there was a big cut across Paige's chest. Lance Archer. I don't know. He was just bleeding. I don't even... See, I don't even know if they did the blade job. Is that I remember when when Eddie Guerrero cut himself. Yeah, it was red, but it was still kind of brownish red. Like this was like super bright, like near neon red. Either they either they nicked an artery, or they added like a little color, like a lot of color to that, because that just seemed overly red. And I know people are going to say, yeah, well, blood's red. Uh, I mean, if you have venous blood, it's kind of like, like reddish purple. 
I mean, I know, even, I don't know. It just seems too bright, and you're like, did it really cut just a artery? Because that was bright red. And now the thing is, is that you want to cover half your face in it, too. You just can't go all like, oh, we're going to have a little, little drib dribble of blood here and there. No, we're going to, oh, I, I just, oh, there we go, all over and up and down my face. So half my face is red. If you're going to do that, you have to have blonde hair. Like, Ty Conti. The Bunny. Or, woo, Ric Flair. I mean, even when Cody did the blade job, he, his whole half of his face wasn't covered. Or a Candice LeRae. They're all going for the Candice LeRae look. I don't know. But yeah, both of them, they had half their face covered in blood. Um, Paige's chest was all cut open from something. I don't even know when Paige got busted open either. Uh, Jake, Jake did the short on clothesline to Adam Page. Adam Page, they like, kind of like, like sold it for a little bit. Got upset. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, and I'm being nice. Jake, the Snake Roberts, told yeah, he, yeah, you know what? <laughs> Whatever. Oh wait, I, I shouldn't be doing that. So yeah, Jake the Snake just just told him you're number one in my book. Yeah, Jake just gave him the finger. That was, Jake gives two Fs. Like, yeah, I won't DDT you. Hangman, Hangman Page said, yeah, DDT me. And Jake's like, F no. My back can't take that anymore. But yeah, it's one thing for a short arm clothesline. I'm, I'm still standing. I'm not going down on the hard concrete on my back. You dope. And that's probably being very nice. That's what Jake would really say to him. And there was a blackout on the steps. <laughs> Lance Archer turned the other way. And oh my goodness. <laughs> Poor Adam Page literally bounced off the steps. And it looked like he messed his finger up too. Because he bounced off those steps and landed kind of weird. Um, eventually they go to the outside... Adam Page puts Lance Archer through one of the tables. Hangman Adam Page is the only one to get up after the referee's 10 count. So that made some sense. That was simple to follow. And then, Adam Cole, baby! Boom! <laughs> Showed up. And oh my goodness! I never realized how small Adam Cole was in comparison to Hangman Adam Page. Adam Page's muscle. Adam Cole. I hate to steal the, the term of Jim Cornette, but he looks like a vanilla midget. He had to be at he has to be at least a couple inches shorter than Adam Page. Weigh at least 70 pounds less than Adam Page. And have and has 40% less muscle than Adam Page does. So yeah. I wonder who's skinnier between the two of them now. Adam Cole or Britt Baker. That's scary. That's weird. Ugh. But yeah. So Adam Cole, being the vanilla midget he was, he picked up the AEW belt. That means he's never seen that belt ever. Um, who knows? Maybe it's the Switchblade, Jay White, starts being the belt collector now. Now that... I think Kenny Omega's still out on, like, multiple surgeries. But, yeah, but then Adam Cole put the belt on, on Paige's shoulder, saying, yeah, I'm coming for your belt. Have it while you can. So, yeah. So, that, folks, was AEW. Um, again, a little bit about the rest of this week. I don't know if I'm going to make the, my predictions video this week or next week. We'll see. Um, next week though, on the 14th, it's Valentine's Day. You know what that means, folks? It's the all-women special for the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. So we'll see what happens then, because I have to go get my PS3 for my friend. On Friday. Yeah. We'll have to do that Saturday. Super Sunday. I might do a third video. 
I might make a cooking video. I might show you how to make California style burritos. Not exactly too sure. Maybe I'll show you the Super Bowl feast of Ho Hobo Tom. I'll see how that goes. I'll see how I feel actually. Um, Cause yeah, Monday I have to close. Tuesday I have to close. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and possibly Monday. That's speed week. Wednesday, I get to go to the gym first. I don't have to be there till like 5.15. Thursday, I have to be there at 2. Friday, 11. Saturday, 8. Sunday, oh God, 7 a.m. with that freaking... Mess. Lot 10 sucks. But yeah. And then the following week, I don't know, it depends on my work schedule, but eventually I will have a speed week videos just for you guys. Uh, other than that, I can take a walk. I'm going to take a shower and go to bed. Um, yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Oh, yeah, wait, uh, that last match. Yeah, I'll just. I did it and that was a cheeseburger match.